Hi folks, welcome to this video on insight learning, one of the theories of learning again. Okay, this one, not so much to say on this one really. Um, what is it to do with it? We need to break it down into points and maybe come up with an example so we've just got a decent understanding of it. So let's have a look at it like this. Let's say you've got a long jumper. Okay. The problem is, the key pitting the blaster scene. Okay, so we've got an understanding of the whole problem. That's the first thing that we can say about insight learning. Okay, what the athlete has got to do is learn to solve that problem themselves. So what has the athlete got to do? They've got to be able to solve the problem independently. They've got to be able to adapt or modify the action to improve. So that's the second thing we can say about it. So Greg Rutherford here has got to learn that, right, I keep hitting this plasticine, I'm overstepping the mark, I've now got to adjust my run-up accordingly so that I can get a legal jump in without taking, back, without taking off too far behind the board entirely so it costs me valuable centimetres, but still I've got to get a jump in or else I'm going to be disqualified. You might think, oh, well, that's fairly straightforward. Look at recent, you know, heptathlon, Katarina Johnson-Thompson, who did three fouls in the heptathlon, she was in gold medal position. Three fouls in the long jump competition over. Okay, so she wasn't capable to adapt or modify the action accurately enough in order to develop a successful outcome. So insight learning is getting an understanding of the whole problem, okay, and then solving that problem independently by adapting or modifying your action. What are the big selling points of this technique? Well, it creates problem solvers, it develops independent learners, it increases motivation. They're three big tick points about insight learning. You want on track, on court, on pitch, thinkers. You don't just want doers, people who can follow orders. You want people who can actually make effective decisions themselves and problem solve themselves. That's what you want in your team or in your performance. If you take the example of Greg Rutherford here, he hasn't got a coach that you can just go up and talk to. Okay, he might be up in the stand somewhere, might be difficult to get to. He's got to solve this problem himself. You know, what do we do with some of our teaching and some of our lessons? We'll give you a topic and say, right, off you go. Because we're trying to develop this insight learning inside of you. You've got to develop, you've got to understand the whole problem. You've got to solve the problem independently because it will develop these three important things in you. It'll teach you to be a problem solver, an independent learner, and it'll ultimately increase your motivation. So that is basically insight learning, okay? But I suppose it's worth saying, where does it fit in with things that we've looked at so far? Well, a word that's often associated with insight learning, or sometimes cognitive learning as it's also known, is the word gestalt or gestaltists. And the word gestalt means entirety, and gestaltists believe that we solve problems better as a whole, i.e. understanding this whole problem. So where is it linking with other aspects of the course? Well, we've looked at how we can break skills down and things like that. But if you're a gestaltist, if you believe that insight learning is the way forward for your athletes, it means teaching them via whole practice methods. If they're going to solve the problem as a whole and have a greater understanding of what is required, as I've written there, you need to make sure that you're encouraging whole practice. Breaking things down doesn't allow them to solve problems and understand the whole problem or modify their actions as a whole to solve the problem. So it links in with part practice methods and whole and whole part practice methods. And if you also look at the video produced on guidance, different forms of guidance, what we're saying here is, again, if you are pushing just self gestalt theory, i.e. insight learning, you need to actually give your performers less guidance. Why? Because of all this stuff here. If I'm constantly having to tell them what to do, I am not generating or creating problem solvers, I'm not developing independent learners, and I'm not increasing motivation because they're still too reliant on me. So it's almost like taking a backward step a little bit as a coach. Get them practicing things as a whole, get them thinking for themselves, get them problem solving for themselves. Don't be too command style in your teaching, don't tell them what to do all the time. And that's the basis surrounding insight learning.